To be real honest with you, I think the devil wears a cheerleader's skirt and he's got a bunch of pom-poms and all he does is sit on the sidelines because he doesn't have any, any power. He sits on the sideline and cheers you on to do the things that make you look like you don't have power, you don't have healing, you don't have victory, and he just says, you're doing such a great job. Rah, rah, rah. Let me give you a cheer right here. <laughs> and he's a little sissy. Because he doesn't have power. He doesn't have strength. Isaiah saw him when he was thrown in the midst of all of us believers as we had recognized up in heaven what we really look like. Because when the physical mask is off and you see your spiritual superiority in Christ, you're more than buffed. <laughs> You are strong, you are mighty, you are powerful, you are a conqueror, you've been beautified, God's living in you. And then this little mass of confusion got thrown in here, this little teeny, weeny, skinny, wimp-armed little guy got thrown in there, and you asked each other, who's that? Who's that? Who's that? And someone said, that's Satan. And then, of course, 99% of believers said, no, that can't be Satan. He's a really big guy, and he's red, and he's got a pitchfork, and he's got a pointy ears and a big tail. See, that's what we've done. We've magnified yeah. this scrawny little defeated, pathetic thing called a defeated angel that Jesus beat the tar out of him. He didn't just sissify him. Amen. <laughs> he beat the tar out of him. Senseless. Devil was crawling for everything he could, and Jesus didn't let him go to the dark. I was staying in a hostage home out in San Diego. Well, a host home. But when we traveled in the groups that we traveled with, we called them hostage homes. Because <laughs> not all of them were really nice, you know. Some of them, some of them were really like... Oh, my God, you stay awake for the first three hours, then I'll stay awake for the next three hours. I mean, it was a hostage home, so we called them hostage homes. And, and it actually happened to be out at the San Diego, you know, uh, air base out there, you know, well, naval base or whatever it was out there. And uh, that night we had sung for all the new, new cadets, and there were over 400 of them, in this building with brick brick um, walls, so a verberation of sound. And when I led 400 of them to Jesus, they didn't say, oh, Jesus, would you please come into my heart? It was, Jesus, now I ask you to come. I mean, it was like this sound. Heaven must have just literally been dancing like, you know, <laughs> you know, just because it was amazing to hear them ask the Lord into their heart with such authority. But then we went to some of the homes, you know. <laughs> and back then, you know, no one's married in the group, and so the guys go with the guys, the girls go with the girls. And so this, this, this gentleman and I, we went into this home, and they said, well, here's, here's your room where you're going to be sleeping. And we walked into the room, and it was a, a single bed. Single bed. So I looked at him, he looked at me, and we didn't say, that. oh, yeah, that's fine, everything's good, everything's good. As soon as we closed the door, I, I was the first one to get my quarter out, and I flipped. I said, you know, box springs or matches, in mattress, you know. And I lost, I got the mattress, and the mattress was so bad, I'm not going to sleep on it. So I let him have the bed, and I just went out, and I said, hey, do you, is the couch available? <laughs> and she said, well, yes. Would you like to sleep on the couch? I'd love to sleep on the couch. That would be so nice. And so I went to sleep on the couch, and, and as she was leaving, um, she said, oh, oh, um, by the way, uh, don't turn the kitchen light off. It was right, right there from, you know, the little family room right to the kitchen. And I said, well, why wouldn't I turn? That was the wrong question to ask. I should have just shut up and said, okay, I won't turn the kitchen light off. But she said, don't turn the kitchen light off. Why wouldn't you turn the kitchen light off? She said, well, there's a lot of roaches here in the house. And then I looked, and it's like, oh, my God. They're all over the walls. <laughs> when the glory of God went into hell and breathed into Jesus, just like he breathed into the first Adam, the breath of life, and he came alive in the glory of God. Not a little bit of power, all Amen. power. That glory lit that place up and those devils squirmed and squirmed and fussed trying to get to every corner, but Jesus was too quick and devil himself, he tried, he'd reach back, he'd pound him some more, he'd reach back and pound him some more. He beat him so thoroughly that there was nothing left of the devil to ever 
harm you, let alone be so spooky that you would actually run from him. Do you know Lester Sumrall? Yeah. He's over in the Philippines sleeping one night, and all of a sudden his bed starts shaking and moves towards the window. <laughs> and he wakes up and sees the devil in person standing there. And this is what he said. Oh, it's only you. Get out. And the devil left, and he said, get back here. And the devil came back and said, put my bed back first. <laughs> and the bed shook like this and went back into place and said, now get out. Amen. Oh, it's only you. <laughs> Woo, glory. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says we're going, to make, we're going to make comments when we figure out who it really is that God went ahead and put in our midst. And we're going to say, is this what caused nations to tremble and brought men to their knees? In other words, is this what caused me to go home early with cancer? Is this what split up my marriage? Is this what caused my children to be lost? Is this what caused me to lose my house, my finances, my job? you got to be kidding me. This is what I bowed into. This is what I gave my authority to. Yeah. 